Good morning all. Today I'm going to be taking a look at this smart charger. It's a smart balance charger. So this is the ISDT SC608. It's uh, a balance charger for up to six cells, but it's really tiny. It's, uh, well, that's how big it is compared to a can of Coke. Uh, so it's a small form factor balance charger and it also has a unique uh, dial which you can rotate and press for working through the menu. So I'm hoping this is going to have a really good user interface. So this device has been sent to me by Banggood. Thanks very much Banggood. And if you want to know more about the arrangement between myself and Banggood, see the description below. Now Banggood have also sent me this uh, LiPo, I think it's a 4 cell, 14.8 volt LiPo, 1500 milliamp hours, 65 C. So this is it out of its box, it says changes start here, um, that peel sheet I'm going to remove in a moment. Uh, so yes this is really tiny, it's kind of wedge shaped, so it sits uh, slightly tilted forward which is handy. And uh, there's a fan in this sort of extended section at the back here. Uh, on the back we have the power input, which is DC 9 to 32 volts. Now interestingly that's on an XT60 connector. Uh, there's another XT60 connector to connect the battery. And the balanced charging port is slightly unusual in that it has these multiple cutouts so that you can position smaller connectors in this uh, seven pin connector. Now you move through the menu system using this uh, jog dial which rotates and also you can click it inwards uh, to select presumably and one other thing I've noticed there's a socket on the side there next to that dial I'm not entirely sure what that's for I'll need to take a look at the menu but before I do that let's power it up and I'm going to power it up using this uh, LiPo, that's 14.8 volts nominal, this takes 9 to 32, so that should be fine. So the LiPo is uh, obviously 4 cell, you can see the 4 packs there. It's a Dynagy uh, 1500 milliamp hour, 65 C, so it has an enormous C rating, and uh, you can see that it has these very thick wires here. I just need to take off that piece of protective foam, which was stopping the plug pressing into the pouches while it was uh, in transport. Now I will provide links to both these items in the description below. Right, let's power this up and see what appears on the display. A couple of beeps, the fan briefly spun up but that's now stopped and this is the initial display. Let's get in a little bit closer. So this first screen is clearly telling me uh, current milliamp hours, so uh, accumulated charge, uh, six different cell voltages, it's saying NC, so I presume that means not connected. Let's just see what happens if I rotate the dial. Uh, okay, so it goes to a second screen showing me uh, presumably the input voltage. Yes, that would be that symbol there with an arrow pointing in. Uh, the output voltage is zero currently and 27 degrees C, that seems a little bit optimistic, it's not that warm in here. Uh, okay, so we just have those two screens. If I now push the button, ah, we've got all sorts of other things. Uh, task, charge, batteries, LiPo 4.2 volts, let's see what other options there are there. Okay, we've got lithium ion 4.1, lithium ion high voltage 4.35, lithium ion phosphate 3.65, uh, lead acid 2 volts per cell and nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium 1.25 uh, volts per cell. So let's pick the 4.2 volt and go back to that display. Well, so far so good for the user interface. You can whip around the menus really quickly. Okay, let's charge a battery pack. So I'm going to charge this uh, 3 cell LiPo, this is uh, nominally 11.1 .1 volts, it's a 1350 milliamp hour. Uh, I've got the main connector there, I've had to adapt it because this has a small JST, this is for my little quadcopter, and I've got the balance charge lead there. So uh, let's first set this thing up for a three cell and see whether it will take in the uh, total current, uh, sorry, total charge. 
So task is to charge. The battery is a LiPo 4.2 volts. Now cells, it's not six, it's three. Uh, current, uh, well I could do this at 1.3 amps because it's a 1350 milliamp hours. And now we've got start. So uh, let's just go back first and connect this battery and see what appears on the display. Right, so let's plug in the main connector. And so the not connected symbol immediately changes to battery voltage 12.5 volts. So that's the voltage of the LiPo that I'm charging. Now I've got to connect the uh, balance charge connector. Now this is a little bit different to usual. Now, usually on something like this Turnigy or the IMAX chargers, you've got multiple balance ports so that you can just pick the one that fits the connector that you're using. However, this one only has the one balance port, but it's got these little cutouts, these little notches, so you can put in different size plugs. Now, the smallest connector I'm assuming would be for a two cell pack, which would have three connections. And I'm guessing the idea of that little ray section there is that you always put one connection to negative and then you allow the other connections to go as far positive as they can, depending on how many connections there are. So I've got uh, four connections in this three cell pack. So I'm assuming that I bias this towards the negative end like that and plug it in. Well, I'm just going to have to go for it because uh, in the manual, which is here, there's nothing about how to connect to the balance charge lead. So let's just do it. Okay, live on camera, no other way to do this. Let's plug that in there. Okay, and we have the three cell voltages. This looks fairly well charged. Uh, 4.16, 4.14, 4.13. And the total battery voltage of 12.43. Good stuff. So a quick check now of the second screen, which shows the input voltage, 15.3, uh, the uh, voltage of the output device, which is my three cell, 12.4, 33 degrees. Now that's definitely not the case, or perhaps it is internally. Right, let's press this button and uh, just quickly reviewing this, charge LiPo 4.20 volts, three cells, 1.3 amps. Let's start it. And there it is. And the current starting to ramp up to my 1.3 amp selected current. The uh, total charge indicator is incrementing. Now we can just sit and watch these cell voltages. Right, this little indicator on the right hand side here looks like there are some other screens to look at. So let's have a look at that. Aha, we've got uh, some internal resistance measurements. They're not showing yet, but they're all in milliohms. What else have we got? Ah, and the other screen is the uh, input and output voltages, which now also show watts, which is quite interesting. Back to the uh, balance voltages. Oh, they've balanced up quite nicely. Let's leave that for a bit longer. And uh, since this is pretty much fully charged, we've got 4.2, 4.2 4.2 and 4.18. We can see now that the total charge current is starting to fall. So this is in constant voltage mode pretty much. There's no information on which of the balance circuits is actually operating. Uh, not that I can see. So I'll just watch that uh, input current fall a bit further. So the charge current is down to 0.5 amps now. Uh, it's been running for about three minutes. The uh, cell voltages are reasonably well balanced. And so far, I have to say, I'm really liking this user interface. It's extremely easy to use. I think I'd have preferred it if you press down on the rotating dial rather than in, because that's a slightly awkward action. Uh, okay, well, let's do a stop. And uh, now let's try something like uh, a discharge or a storage charge. Uh, so in task, uh, it's currently set to charge. Let's see what options there are. Okay, we do have a storage charge, so let's do that. That's obviously gonna discharge initially. Uh, so yeah, let's do a storage charge. Uh, LiPo, okay, now it's telling me what the termination voltage will be. 
So it will go, it'll take each cell down to 3.8 volts. Uh, three cells again, current 1.3 amps. That's impressive if it can do that. Okay, let's see if it can do that. Uh, start. Ah, the current's showing up as negative. That's good. That's what we like to see. The colors changed. So storage charge is obviously purple. Charge is obviously orange. Ah, now it doesn't look like it's able to do this at 1.3 amps because it seems to have stopped at a total uh, current of 0.4 amps or minus 0.4 amps. But we should now see the cell voltages start to fall. Good. Let's actually go and do a discharge now, actually, because I want to see what color the discharge screen is. So let's go back into the menu. Uh, go to discharge. So this will take the uh, LiPo cells down to 3.3 volts. Three cells, one amp. Let's see if it'll do that. And the discharge screen is pink. Now you'd expect it when it's discharging because it's obviously not going to intelligently put the charge from this battery back into the source battery. This thing will get quite hot because it's obviously going to be uh, discharging into some resistive elements, either resistors or MOSFETs. And you can hear that the fans come on and it's whirring away quite fiercely there. Discharge current again seems to be limited to 0.4 amps. Let's uh, just let this run for a while. Now there is a bit of a sort of hot smell coming out of uh, the charger, but you'd expect that because it's probably heating up those resistors or MOSFETs for the first time. There's a bit of a, a, a warm smell, but the fan's running furiously, so I'm sure that's keeping the components sufficiently cool. Now there's a state of charge indicator here. It's saying 93% charged. I don't know how it's calculating that. It must be doing it from the voltages, I guess, because it doesn't know the total capacity of this pack. I haven't told it that. Now, interestingly, if I do a discharge task and set the current, it allows me to set a maximum current of three amps. Uh, if I do a storage charge and set the current, it actually allows me to set a maximum current of eight amps, which is bizarre. There's no way it's gonna be able to uh, take this to storage voltage at a current of eight amps. Uh, well, let's try it. Eight amps uh, start. It only seems to go up to uh, 0.4 amps. Why would it give you that uh, that option? That seems strange. So I'm in the middle of a storage discharge. Uh, I can see the input and output voltages and the cell voltages. Now it looks like even without stopping, I can change the current. So that was on 0.4. Let's go all the way down to say 0.2 amps. And yeah, that has dropped there. So it looks like you can change the current midway through a charge. You don't have to stop it, which is quite handy. Oh, and the fan's slowing down ever so slightly as the heat being generated is that much less. Well, I think that's really neat. Not only is it extremely compact, so an ideal thing to carry around uh, if you want to keep your pack size down to a, a, min a minimum size, but uh, also the user interface is just extremely easy to navigate through. Okay, I just want to try something else. I want to actually swap these two packs over because I should be able to put the uh, the four cell pack as my uh, output and use this pack as the input. Now this has very thin wires, so I'm not going to do a high current charge, but I could certainly do a, a discharge or a storage charge of the bigger pack. Let's try that. Uh, so I suppose I should take out the uh, balance charge lead first, then take out the... Uh, output battery cable and now remove the cable going into the input and switch these two cells around. 
So using the uh, three cell pack as my input, it's saying I've got an input of 12.4 volts. Now that's fine because that goes from nine to 32. So now let's connect up my uh, output pack. Uh, right, the balance charge lead on this is extremely tiny. Uh, let's just go back to watching the cell voltages so I can see them come on when I plug this in. Again, I'm gonna bias it towards the negative. So that's like that. And that's showing uh, 3.8 pretty much across the board. This is a brand new battery, so I suppose it should be set approximately to a storage charge. So that looks fine. Okay, so we can see the four cell voltages. Now, if I go into the menu, it has immediately changed the number of cells. It looks like I don't have to set that. It's changed it to a 4S, so that's pretty handy. Now, I am going to do a charge because I wanted to show the fact that it can step the voltage of the source pack up to charge uh, the destination pack. But I'm going to do this at a very low current because of those very thin wires. So let's go for uh, half an amp. That should be fine. So it's a LiPo 4.2, I'm charging it, it's four cells, and I'm charging it at half an amp. Let's start that going. And what I wanted to see was in this third menu, uh, the input voltage is 12.3, the output voltage is higher, it's 15.3. So I'm charging at half an amp, uh, the fan's not running, the fan doesn't need to run here because the uh, switch mode conversion of Input voltage to output voltage is efficient. Uh, so there's very little uh, heat being generated. Okay, so we have cell voltages, 3.82 across the board. Uh, we now have some internal resistance measurements. Now they look interesting, 19.9 twice, 17.7 and 11 milliohms. I'm just wondering what the exact um, granularity, what the precision or the resolution, I should say, of these measurements are. It's hard to tell. Uh, and the third screen, again, tells me the input and output voltages and the internal temperature, which is 44 degrees. Good. The only thing I can think of that I'd quite like to see as an addition is some sort of indication when the balance charge circuits are switched on and off. Um, I assume they're resistive so it's just a resistor placed across uh, two of the balance charge cables. But it'd be nice, quite nice to see when they cut in and out. A little dot or a little symbol of some sort on there would be quite nice. But that's really the only thing I can uh, say to the negative with this device. It's just really neat, small, easy to use, easy to navigate around. Let's stop that charge. Fantastic little unit. Now, since this uh, Dynergy pack is already at virtually storage charge voltages, let's actually do a storage charge and uh, actually see it through to completion. So storage, LiPo 3.8, four cells. Uh, we could do it more aggressively than 0.5 amps. Let's do it at um, two amps, say. I don't think it will do it at two amps. Let's start that going. Ah, now what's that double beep? Perhaps that means, oh, it does. It says storage done. So it's determined that it's already at storage charge voltages. So there's actually nothing to be done. Um, a quick word about the display. It's actually an IPS LCD. So it has very good viewing angles. You can view it almost right up to 180 degrees. And apparently it's very easy to view uh, out in bright daylight. So the display is very nice. Now I'm just looking at the manual on my computer here and it doesn't actually tell me what the little hole uh, next to the jog dial is. I mean, I suspect it's for a temperature sensor, but there's no mention of it in the manual. And there really isn't anything to guide you into how to plug in the balance charge lead, but certainly biasing it towards the negative side uh, seemed to be fine, but that's not really made very clear in the manual. Uh, some stuff on the internal resistance measurement, it says that you should get some readings within two to three minutes after charging has been initiated. I think there are some disclaimers here about it, may not be terribly accurate, didn't look terribly accurate to be honest. 
Uh, some stuff here about judgment of complete charging. It looks to me like um, it will stop charging when the uh, pack voltage reaches its target voltage. But if the cells still aren't balanced, it looks to me like it continues to balance the cells even after it's terminated the charge which is useful to know. And there's something here about the screen turns green and then the screen turns blue. So that's interesting. And uh, a quick look on Banggood's website. Uh, this item is currently $35. Uh, there's some videos here and there's lots of images uh, showing the various displays. It uses an ARM Cortex M4 CPU. You can see a, a expanded view of the internals, including what looks like quite a lot of heat dissipation stuff with possibly even some uh, thermal pipes to transport heat away. So it looks like it's an efficient design. I think it would have to be because it's such a small unit. Uh, lots on the outstanding design and lots of additional spec there. So a uh, big thumbs up from me. Uh, this device is massively smaller than this uh, Turnergy charger this is an eight cell charger admittedly and uh, the user interface is just so much easier to navigate this thing i can never remember how to do it so yeah really like this smart charger cheerio